We've given the guys rest on off days where normally we, we would like to practice. I think for most coaches, you'd like to get them back on the ice, but um, we tried to get their energy level back up to where we felt they needed to be because it isn't easy. Even the way we travel, it can be a challenge. The other thing I think we've done a good job with is we haven't used that at all. So I've not heard that complaint one time from our room, which is, uh, I think, a testament to some of the older players that they haven't even brought that information up. So it's just about playing on the road and making sure we're, we're at our best. What's been the difference with Sharon Govich? Uh, confidence, for one. I, I hate using that word, but early on in the year, we had him in a spot where he was a fourth-line center, um, where we were trying to figure out what type of player he was, where does he fit in. We knew in New Jersey that he was a guy that could score, but he was also a guy they leaned on in defensive situations. So it was a bit of trial and error. and. Uh, the one thing that he did is he never complained when he was getting low minutes like that and he got an opportunity and he scored in I think it might have been back-to-back -back games or two of three and then he got bumped up and he took advantage of it. Now I think he's basically a point of game guy for us or close to it if he's not over his last 23-24 games. So um, he, he took advantage of his opportunity and he didn't complain when it really wasn't there for him. And what about uh, the two assists Huberto got in that yeah. third period? I mean, that's a real sign that he's turning a corner too. Yeah, and it's nice to see for him. It's nice to see for us. I think that's the first time I've seen him play a game like that in probably a year and a half. Mm -hmm. So um, we want him to feel good about where he's at. And I think there is a bit of chemistry developing between those three players and Elias and Sharon. So um, if we can keep them on their toes and contributing like a top line should be contributing, um, then we feel like we're going to be in really good shape. Jonathan just mentioned that's probably, you know, I guess maybe goes a little underrated, but Elias and the plays that he's making subtly that's helped set up some of that. I mean, just maybe how that line kind of ticks as a unit. Also. Yeah, well, Elias is that way. He's underrated with his offensive ability. Everybody looks at him and thinks he's a, He's just purely a good 200-foot center. Maybe not a ton of offense there, but he's got it in him for sure. Um, and I think now they're starting to understand where each other are on the ice. So that's, it comes when you play with guys a little bit more often. And these guys now have been together for a few games. So you can see them talking a little bit more as a line than what they have probably in the past. And um, they're, they're being rewarded. Now's a different game though tonight because this is a different team and they're gonna have to find a way to play against bigger, heavier back end. Dads, a lot of a lot of talk around the dads. So they'd love to yeah. they'd love to see this thing finished off. Yeah. Two and zero, sort of, yeah. so to speak. Well, I know there was in the past. It was always if the dads performed better than the moms, they would get brought back right. the next year. So I'm sure the dads are pushing for yeah. a, a clean sweep again because I I know they do enjoy these trips. There's a lot on the line. <laughs> There's a lot on the line for them <laughs> for sure, as well as us.